You're stealing oh, Scott's thunder. Okay, sorry, sorry. Take two. That's why you can edit these things. Go. I met our next author this morning. I've known her son, Mark, for some time now. And he's quite the guy. <coughs> and I would imagine his, mo his mother is just the same way. It's a good thing I don't know her any better than I do because I'd probably spend the 15 minutes talking about her and pick up her entire slot. So I'd like to introduce Linda Wallace McGuire. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon. Um, Mark really is the one responsible for um, me writing. Um, when I retired uh, from teaching in the middle school over 25, for 25 years plus, um, he said, um, Mom, you need to write a book. I said, well, I've always wanted to do that. He said, no, I'm serious. You really need to write a book. And I said, well, I kind of got an idea because I had some experiences that were kind of, okay, I'll consider it. Well, it took me five years and I wrote my first novel called The Principal. And it is a story, it is a murder mystery about uh, a principal who is not well liked and um, no one on the faculty liked her. And she's found dead in her office on a Monday morning and they're trying to find out who killed her. And she has an interesting book. She has a very Southern name. Her name is Dorothy Bell Butts, B-U-T-T-S, <laughs> and they call her D.B. And you journey through the middle school. There's characters and adventures and a surprise ending. And it was a book for me to write for therapy after teaching in the middle school as long as I did. Um, and it was my first book. Mark told me, he said, well, I think Turnabout's fair play. I said, now, what do you mean by that, son? He said, well, you got me writing when we moved to Lexington, South Carolina, where I live. Um, Mark, I encouraged Mark to get on the yearbook staff. He fought it tooth and nail. So he finally was on the staff, and he was selling ads, which he detested. He did not like selling ads. So one day, the yearbook advisor came in and she said, Mark, I need somebody to write an article. It's due this afternoon. We have a deadline. Could you do it? He said, sure. And he wrote it. And when she read it and came back, she said, you're no longer selling ads. You're writing. And that's where he started writing. He would write and write and stay up writing and all of that. So he was a great encouragement to me. And I... I can't say in a lot of ways that I enjoyed writing this because it was somewhat therapy for me. But I told him that, and he said, Mom, now you need to write a second book for fun. And I did. And trust me, it was fun. And this is the second book. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you as my favorite 1940s song of World War II. And um, the cover of the book is my father-in-law, Mark's grandfather and his wife. She was a beauty queen at Georgia. They met at Georgia. He was a decorated World War II hero. And this book um, has a lot of surprises in it. But I'll tell you how I wrote this book. In 1968, I was a summer missionary to Dallas, Texas. And I lived with a couple in Texas uh, named Addie and Ernie. And um, they had no children of their own. They kind of adopted me as their own child. And um, I, st I have stayed in touch with him all these years. Ernie died in 2007, and I went back to Texas in 2007 and promised Mama Addie I would come see her every summer, and I would call her every Monday night, which I did. I kept my promise until she died in 2016. A lot of this is her story. I would go visit. I'd take my computer. She'd tell me stories about her and Ernie and the war and I would type, and I would type. And it all came together and jailed. And this is a love story with fun surprises. As my granddaughter told me after she read the book, she wanted to read it before it was ever published. And I said, well, what did you think about it? She said, oh, it made me laugh and it made me cry. There's some real funny characters in it. And these characters were Addie's friends. And, you know, people say, where do you get your ideas from? Well, my favorite South Carolina writer, 
Pat Conroy, how I miss him. And he said two things that I have remembered. He said, I steal stuff from people. Dead silence. And he said, I do. I listen in on conversations in airports, malls, restaurants, and I started doing that doing that and writing stuff down. And my husband said, What are you doing? I said, I've just overheard a conversation. I'm gonna use it in a book. And as Pat Conroy said, around me, no one is safe. And that's kind of the way I am. I, I take notes, I write, I get an idea, I hear somebody say something and I go, ooh, I'm gonna find that, in the, you're gonna find that in the book somewhere. And so it's been a lot of, lot of fun to do that. Mm -hmm. This book, I loved writing it. And like I said, Mark said, let your second book be a fun book for you to write. And it really was. And I had interviewed people with World War II. I had had people come to my classroom when I taught Diary of Anne Frank. I had one wonderful World War II veteran who's now gone on the glory train to heaven. And he and his wife came, he brought his uniform, they brought photographs. The kids asked questions for hours and they were mesmerized. And he was part of the inspiration for this as well. The book is dedicated to my own dad. He will be 97 in a couple mm. of weeks. Wow. And um, his health kind of failed. He was in World War II right at the end. Um, but he was in great health, so much so that on his 96th birthday, he bought a new set of golf clubs. <laughs> so uh, I hope I have a lot of his genes. And my mother's 95, and they both read the book. And I think it would be a great read. I don't think anyone would be disappointed in reading I'll Be Seeing You. And I told Mark, I said, he called me one day and he said, Mom, you want to be sued? And I said, no, I don't want to be sued. He said, well, you got to change some stuff in your book. I said, what are you talking about? He said, the words to, your, to I'll Be Seeing You are not on public domain. And I shrieked. And so I took a whole bunch of stuff out that I had where I had used part of the song or whatever. But it was a fun ride. I've enjoyed doing what I'm doing. It's so exciting to, to be a writer and meet other writers and talk with people. I love people and I love life. And I hope I'll be seeing more of you folks that I've seen today. And this has been fun. Thank you for inviting me. Linda, thank you. And, and um what is your, your website, or how can people get to your book? Um, they can go to Amazon.com and order it from Amazon, either one of these, and it is under Linda Wallace McGuire, M-A-G-U-I-R-E, and I am working on having a better website. So um, please write it, look at the reviews, and um, then read it. And, and write a good review for me. I'd enjoy it. Or whatever you think. You know, I enjoy seeing them. But I will tell you, I quit reading reviews. I just see how many I've gotten. Because as Pat Conroy said, and I told you he's one of my favorites, he said, don't read reviews. People that re write reviews, they've never written a book. What do they know? So, there you go. go. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here, Linda. Thank you very much. You've, you've made a, this a better day by you coming to visit with us. Thank you.